The right honorable leader of the opposition. Here, uh, you'll understand fully uh, when I say that over the years I found that the goodbyes in this place are far more generous and spontaneous than the hellos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, notwithstanding, I am I'm very, very touched by the words of three old friends of mine to begin with, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Member of Parliament for Vegreville, Member for Oshawa, my colleague and friend of 30 years, Member for Windsor West, and uh, particularly uh, a reference to our shared mission in this House of Commons, to which I will refer in a moment. Je dois remercier aussi mes collègues, le Parti du Caucus, le député de Humber, saint barbe Bay Verte, et le député, le vice-doyen de la Chambre, le député de Saint-Denis, pour leur uh, parole fortement généreuse. <coughs> I suppose I was particularly touched uh, by uh, what the Minister of uh, Forestry, the Member of Parliament for uh, Prince George, uh, had to say. Uh, Prince George Peace River, there being two Prince Georges, uh, and uh, the member for uh, Esquimalt, uh, Wanda Fuca. Uh, I have uh, considered it a privilege to, to represent uh, our province, and I'm particularly sensitive to the way they address this house uh, before your honor. I, uh, I'm not going to allow the record to stand unchallenged, however. Uh, <laughs> and I leave, it, uh, I leave it to you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you understand uh, what it is uh, uh, to seek salmon on both coasts. And uh, I want to tell the uh, member for Prince George Peace River, the question before the House will always be, uh, who had the matches? <laughs> who, who killed the salmon? Who had the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, who, who saved whom? <laughs> Let it be a warning to any member who ventures into the outdoors to go properly equipped. Which is the most important? I want to, before I address uh, a few short matters, because I appreciate, Mr. Speaker, you're in allowing me the indulgence of, of the House. We are interrupting the, the public time of the country. To thank Jill and the family for all the support. Thank you. formidablement touché par les paroles de tous les députés au sujet de la Chambre des communes. Parce que pour moi, ainsi que pour tout le monde ici, le plus grand privilège d'un citoyen canadien, c'est d'être élu par ses compatriotes à la Chambre des communes. J'ai toujours dit que à mes collègues, surtout les plus jeunes, Il faut faire attention, il faut respecter les autres. Il faut respecter, respecter les autres députés de n'importe quel parti. Parce que tout le monde ici, chacun et chacune parmi nous, représente des Canadiens. Après une élection dans un pays fortement libre. This is and remains the, the forum of the nation, Mr. Speaker. This is the highest court in the land. This is the place where finally issues must be decided. And I know from time to time the critics and the members of the media feel that, uh, and those who watch Question Period wonder what we're doing here. Yes, it should be a legislative workshop. There is business to be accomplished on behalf of the people of Canada. But the word parliament, taken from the Norman, was well chosen. Parliament, parlay, debate. This is theater, this is debate, and it's the freest chamber in the free world. <laughs> It's, 
it's uh, unruly at times, but it's untrammeled and uncensored and unpredictable. <clears throat> I had a very good question from Gail Morris uh, in the press conference today. She asked me my impressions of what had changed during my years here. I thought the most fundamental influence, of course, is TV as uh, it reflects on the proceedings of the House. And I welcome that change, and I think we all do. I think that it converts the House of Commons again into a, a town hall, a forum for the people. But it has changed the, the elements of the House, and you and I were talking about it, Mr. Speaker. Question period has become the dominant issue and period and focus of the, the people as it relates, relates, relates to the House of Commons. And I think we should recognize that. I think perhaps it should be extended so that all members of the House, particularly members of the government side, participate more fully in it. I think we ought to, I think we ought to extend, I think we ought to extend the, the Order 31s to allow individual members of Parliament to get their points of view. I've always felt that uh, continuing the excellent work of Jim McGraw, now the Lieutenant Governor of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, that uh, we ought to examine whether fewer issues remain issues of confidence, so that there is more liberty of expression and freedom of uh, registering our votes uh, in this chamber. Yeah, yeah. I uh, think that there are ways of maintaining the relevance of this place, increasing it because it disturbs me that while question period is full, as it properly should be, if the members from all sides of the House our principal debates, <coughs> throne speech, the budget, uh, the main issues on second reading of our principal pieces of legislation. The House is not as full as it might be, reflecting the importance of the issues that we're debating here. There must be ways under your guidance, Mr. Speaker, that we can re-enhance the, the relevance of this place. And I know how strongly you and I feel about it. In any event, the Member for Vegreville, the Deputy Prime Minister, mentioned the late John George Diefenbaker. And I say this, not in any uh, pompous way, I hope, but particularly to our younger members of Parliament from all sides of the House. Mr. Diefenbaker used to say, don't neglect this place. Spend your time here. It may take many years to build up a reputation in the House of Commons, but you can lose it in one day. And uh, that is the importance of this place, and it's one place I'm really going to miss.